right, in this video, we're going to look at prime factorization. And to some of you, you probably have never heard of this before, but this is a commonly used technique in many situations in math. Three examples would be finding a greatest common factor, finding a least common multiple, or even when you're simplifying radical expressions using prime factorization, it can be very beneficial. Now, what is prime factorization? The best way to show you this is to just go ahead and do an example. This first one here, we want to find the prime factorization of the following numbers. Now I use what's called a prime factor tree. So I'm just gonna draw two branches off of this eight, and we wanna think of any two numbers that multiply to give us eight. For example, four times two. Now, four times two, are either one of these numbers prime? Now remember, prime is a number that's only divisible by one in itself. Well, two is a prime number. However, four is not. We can continue to break up this four into two times two. Now notice these factors that we have now. We have a two, a two, and a two. Now I'm not circling the four because four is not prime. However, these three twos that we have here are prime. Now check out what we have. We have eight, that was the original number, and these prime factors, two times two times two. Notice we did circle three of them. Two times two is four, four times two is eight. So two times two times two is eight, and this is the prime factorization of eight. We have broken eight up into factors that are prime, hence prime factorization. Now very often some students say, where do I start? And back here I mentioned, find any two numbers that multiply to give you eight. Well, let's do the same thing with 24. Now some of you may be thinking two times 12, some of you may be thinking four times six, and some of you may be thinking three times eight. Any of those work. I'm gonna pick the four and the six, and you may wonder why, well, there is no real reason. I'll come back and break 24 up in a different way using two different factors here in a moment, but let's go ahead and finish this one off. We want to continue drawing branches until we have prime factors. Four, that is not a prime number. We can break that up into two times two. Six, that is not a prime number. We can break that up into two times three. Now, all of these factors that we have here are prime factors. So therefore, we can write 24 as two times two times two times three. And again, I'm just using these pieces here, these factors that we could not break up anymore. And we can always check our work. Two times two is four, times two more gives you eight, and then eight times three does give you 24. Now, like I said, I was gonna show you a different way, so let's come over here and do 24 in a different way pick any two numbers that multiply to give you 24. How about two and 12? Two times 12 does give us 24. Two is a prime factor, but 12 is not. So you may wonder here, well, what do I use? Any two numbers that multiply to give you 12, such as two times six. You could have used three times four, nothing wrong with that. Here's another prime factor. And now let's break up this six into two times three. My point here is this, no matter how you do it, as long as you pick two numbers that multiply to give you the number above it, it doesn't matter what two numbers you pick, check it out. 24 is equal to two times two times two times three. Well, that's the same thing we have over here, so I'm not even gonna waste time and write it down again. But I hope you do see, you can pick any two numbers you want. Here I started off with four times six, and now I have two times 12, but we end up with the same prime factorization. And now finally, this last example here, you may be thinking, oh my goodness, that's a big number. Well, let's think of something nice that goes into 360. The first one that comes to mind for me is 36 times 10. 36 times 10 does give you 360. Now let's continue breaking these up because both of these are composite. They are not prime numbers. 36, how about six times six? We can break these sixes up each into two times three. So I'm gonna do that for both of those here. So we do have some prime factors down here, but what you cannot forget about with these branches, 
the 10, we got to finish breaking it up too into 2 times 5. So now notice the prime factorization of 360. Now you don't have to do it in any particular order, but I like to put mine in increasing order. So we have a 2, 2, 2. So we have 2 times 2 times 2. Then we have a 3 and a 3. So times 3 times 3. And then we have this 5 here. This is the prime factorization of 360. Let's check our work real quick. 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 3 is 24. 24 times 3 is 72. And if you take 72 times 5, let's check it out real quick. 72 times 5, let's put down our 0, carry our 1. 5 times 7 is 35, plus 1 gives us 36. Check it out. We do get 360 when we multiply all of these prime factors together. Now again, this technique of prime factorization, it is very useful in finding greatest common factors, least common multiples, and even simplifying radicals. Those are the three most common times you would use this. Now, I'm not saying you have to use this to find a least common denominator or greatest common factor or to simplify radicals, but this way does work. And there you have it, three examples of prime factorization. This is building up to other concepts where we talk about multiples and factors, such as least common multiple, greatest common factor. But this is a very helpful skill to have when you're doing arithmetic in any math course. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.